figured it out. Hey. Okay. Uh, React Denver, this is what, uh, May? So thank you for coming. Actually, it's awesome. Much bigger crowd this, this month. I'm happy to see that. Um, so normal uh, things apply. Thanks for coming. Pizza's coming, I promise, uh, as long as I don't drop it on the stairs on the way up. Uh, we'd like to thank our host, the Trade Desk here, uh, hosting us now for a year, which is fantastic. Uh, housekeeping is the bathroom is all the way back where you came from around the stairs. Um, no, unfortunately, there's no shortcuts. Um, drinks are in the fridges. Uh, great. Uh, some of great sponsors, Gusto, uh, David, say hi. Uh, and Zoom. Zoom has been a, a fantastic partner, giving us a business account for a few years now. Uh, so they've been awesome. Uh, we do have an open collective. Open collective is, is uh, what we use for our expenses. It's how our sponsors pay us, but individuals can contribute. So I'm not pressuring anyone to do it. Um, by no means do you have to pay to be here. I will never charge anyone to be here. Pizza's on the house. But should you want to contribute, it's open collective. Um, he won't make you pay. But no, five dollars before you. <laughs> you know, I, 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 I strongly believe that meetups should be free. Um, and you know, pizza is a, a, a fairly simple, you know, price to pay for for me to get folks here. Um, with that, I'm gonna hand this off to Sling, and I'm gonna go stand over there and get ready for pizza. So, great. Welcome, welcome to React Denver. My name is Slim Ahmedov, and today I'm gonna to show you why every company is a software company, whether directly or indirectly, every company is a software company. So there are companies that directly work on software. They build applications for uh, end users like regular customers or businesses. And then there are companies that are so heavily reliant on software to run their business that you might as well call them a software company that happens to specialize in X, right? Like that, like the gyro shop in your area, that's a gyro, that's a software company that happens to specialize in selling gyros and those happen to be very delicious. Mm -hmm. So let me, show, let me show you what I mean by every company is a software company. So let's say, let's say Jeff and I, we, we start believing the hype, right? We're like, man, you know, we're not gonna have jobs in four months because AI is gonna take over. And we quit and we start a company together. We're like, we're going to start a business together. And we end up starting a junk removal company. Okay. And basically a junk removal company, what it does is people have junk that they want to get rid of. It's a lot of junk and it's a hassle to get rid of it. So they call a company to come over. The company gives them an estimate of how much it's going to cost. And then if the customer is okay with it, the junk removal company takes the junk and they get paid and that's it. Okay, and we're gonna call our company, put your junk in my trunk. Very professional name, that's what we're gonna call it. So Jeff and I, we started this business and we put all our money into this business, okay? And all we need to get started is a truck and a trailer and we gotta start the business. So, let's see. so we go ahead and we start the business and what do we need? We need to register the business, so we need an LLC. We need a business bank account. We need a point of sale system so we can accept payments from customers. And we need a lot of customers that need our service. Like number four is very important. Okay. So for us to get customers, we need to do marketing and advertising, right? We're going to build a website, but that's what we'll start off with. We'll use WordPress, even though we're both web developers, you know, we're not going to waste our time building something custom. We're just going to use WordPress. We'll list out our items we take, the services we have, and a contact section. And then we're gonna take that site, take our business, put it on Google My Business, Yelp, Angie, Yellow Pages, and there's 200 other listing sites that we can put the business on. The reason why you wanna do this is for local SEO so that when somebody searches junk removal near me, that we would come up on the first page or we'd come up first. And 
And then after that, we're going to get on social media. We'll get on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, MySpace, Friendster, all the popular platforms. We're going to be on there. We're going to create some buzz. So these first three things that I mentioned, these are just, this is like the foundation of our digital strategy. Okay, social media, getting on the listing sites, having a website, right? This is just the foundation. So if we want to get results fast, we're going to have to do some advertising. Okay, we're going to have to pay for Google ads, Facebook ads, Yelp ads, even Craigslist, they have ads as well. And we're not just going to send the traffic to our website because the user might get distracted. So we're going to send them to a landing page. Okay, we're going to send them to a landing page so we can take that visitor and convert them to a, to a lead. And there's software to do that as well. So we're, so we're doing all this, right? We're, we have our website, we have our ads going and we're, we're starting to make money, right? We're making a lot of money now. And now we got to focus on the back end of the business, which is accounting. So we're either going to use QuickBooks or we're going to hire an accountant. And this is very important. Okay. Accounting is very important because we don't want to get on the bad side of uncle Sam and uncle Sam has a lot of, you know, special skills and he might get us. So we got to take care of this. And we're also going to use a CRM, a customer relationship management software to keep track of our customers and to manage scheduling and dispatching. So everything I've mentioned so far requires software, right? Everything from registering the business to having a business bank account, a point of sale system, that's all software. Having a website, that's software. Uh, listing it on Google, software, social media, all of this is software, even even with ads and uh, accounting. So if we don't use QuickBooks or an accounting software, we'll hire somebody and they're gonna use accounting software, right? So everything that I've mentioned so far is software. And I'm just hitting like surface level stuff. I'm not going deep into this. It's just basic stuff. You register your business, you have a website, you know, you do ads, you're on social media, just basic, basic business stuff, right? This is basic. and. As our company grows, we can start adding more things, start adding payroll software, training software, keeping track of uh, users or not users, keeping track of our, of our employees. So this can go on and on and on. Okay. So why am I, why am I talking about this? So I want to talk about like really quickly, the mistake that cost me four years of my time. So when I got out of high school, I didn't know what I wanted to do. Like I didn't have, I had, had an idea, but I wasn't really sure. So I started experimenting with different industries on there. I had construction, marketing and sales, business, hospitality, tech. And in each of these industries, I found a job to try out like, Hey, what is it like to work in construction? What is it like to do sales? Like I even got a door to door sales job for six months, tried it out. Didn't like it much, but I did learn a lot. So I did this with, with everything except tech, but with tech, uh, early on, I came across web development, mobile development. And as I was doing research into web development, it was, I ended up coming across WordPress and Wix and these other uh, drag and drop builders like Squarespace. And seeing those being 18, 19, being very naive, I'm like, man, I'm not going to have a job in five years, right? If I join this now, like these, this technology is going to take over, WordPress is going to take over, and I'm not going to have a job. Like, like business, small businesses, local businesses, they don't need me to do this for them. They can do it themselves. So because of that, I didn't pursue web development, okay? And then it took me like three, four years to come back to web development, and now I'm doing it now. But in one way, I was right. Okay, these local businesses, they don't need a custom website built with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. They don't need that. That's just overkill, right? What they need is WordPress. What they need is Squarespace. They need these like things that they can build themselves really fast. And so in that way, I was wrong. No, in that way, I was right. But in another way, I was really wrong that there is still this last 20% of custom solutions, okay? And that's where we as web developers, as software developers, that's where we live. That's where we make our money. It's in the last 20% of the custom solutions. And as that percentage goes down, like with 15%, 10%, 5% custom, then the level of difficulty of the problems that we have to solve as developers, it increases. Okay. 
So, so why am I talking about this? Okay, this, this next section is AI and the advancement of FUD. Like this, this FUD, this fear, uncertainty, and doubt is really, really advanced. All right, you got to stay like six feet apart because you might catch it. It's really, really dangerous. Okay, and like you guys saw a few months ago, right? ChatGPT 3.5 comes out and it's everywhere. It's on the news, it's on YouTube, it's on all these articles being written about it. And then you start seeing these clickbaity YouTube videos. Hey, you're not going to have a software developer job. <laughs> you know, 60% of jobs gone. And it's like, man, what's going on over here? And then, and then you read the comments and people are actually, they're, they're buying into the FUD. They're believing the FUD. And I have some comments here that I found. These guys are eating up the FUD. This guy's like, I'm literally in my first year of a CS degree. And all I have ever wanted was to become a software engineer, gain tons of experience and within 10 years, get a really well-paid job. It actually sickens me that this is more, more than likely never going to happen now. And I'm not, and I'm not going to lie. It's affecting my mental health. This guy is eating up the FUD, man. He can't get enough of the FUD. And this next guy is like, I'm about to graduate with a CS degree. And the thought of losing a career I haven't even started terrifies me. He's terrified. This next guy this is actually pretty funny. He's like, as a student who's about to graduate college really soon with a CS degree, I'm terrified. I basically have about two or three years to, to save as much money as I can and save that money to get into another major nursing school. Here I come. Right. And then the comment reads, by the time you finish nursing school, nursing will also be automated. <laughs> so it's just, it's everywhere, right? Like all our jobs are going to be taken. Like we're in danger, man. So these people, they're eating up the foot. And so all these, all these articles that you see, all these uh, YouTube videos that you see, like all those people, they just have opinions. They don't know the future. Okay. And I don't know the future either, but I also have opinions. So this is, this is my opinion on it. So as AI advances, people will become more productive. Using these tools, they'll become more productive. And especially business-minded people will use these tools to create more startups. Those startups are going to need custom solutions, right? Whether it's directly they're building software or indirectly they're using software to run their business, they're going to need custom solutions. And then that creates more opportunities for software developers those developers, they become more productive and it just goes on and on and on. So that's my, that's my opinion on it. So, so if you're thinking about getting into this space, okay, if you're thinking about becoming a software engineer or, or you're going to college and you're like, man, I'm getting the CS degree and I'm, I'm not going to have a job in three years, just like I thought, you know, if you're thinking about that, then just, this is my final message. You just sit down. Okay. Relax. Take a deep breath. <laughs> Right, take a deep breath and unfudge yourself. <laughs> Move your fear, and uncertainty, and doubt, and just just relax. You're gonna have opportunities. There are gonna be plenty of opportunities. Like we need more people coming into this space because senior developers, you know, there's there's a limited amount of them. They're getting older. They're gonna be living leaving the space, and we need to replace them. So, that's my final message. That's it. You guys have any questions? Are you able to see the Zoom chat? Uh, is there, I don't have the Zoom up. Let's see if there's any questions or anything on Zoom. It's down there at the bottom right. Isn't it? Bottom right. Little people. The, in the taskbar. Are you guys seeing this? Ask a chat. <laughs> <laughs> There's a little people counter on the bottom right of the screen, it looks like. Little people. Uh, I see that. Oh, talking about this. No, that's something else. Where's Jeff? <laughs> Jeff went to get the pizza. Yeah, he's down so Yeah, I should stop oh. sharing. Oh, it's right here. Here we go. He did leave his computer on run. <laughs> <laughs> I see the comments. Okay, cool. I was talking to my brother about this the other day and he made a, a comment that I thought was quite true. There will always be work for highly skilled people. Yeah. And I, I that's what I kind of like, whenever I start to have that fear, uncertainty and doubt, I'm like, but I have a lot of skills. Yeah. I can do different things also. You know, I can roll that experience to do other things. Plus I'm a data engineer and I have seen users that have control over 
say a piece of software like Salesforce, that right. you tell you the data that comes out of that is unusable. <laughs> so you still need people to orchestrate, plan, and execute things in a logical way. Yeah. And ChatGPT can't help you with that. You know, you need somebody that has the context to talk to all the people to get all the information together. So I, I think as long as we have internet and electricity, there's going to be opportunities for developers. Mm -hmm. Somebody has to sign off on what it outputs. Huh? Right. Somebody has to at least sign off on what it outputs. Yeah. So somebody has to be responsible because you can't blame the AI. Or, so some engineer along the way, even if you get a lot of your work done through AI, still has to say, yeah, this is the right way to do it. And there's no security issues here. Yeah. Someone still has to sign off on it. Right? Like the, it's like a, uh, GitHub Copilot. Yeah. You're still the Copilot. Yeah. I mean, no, you're the pilot. And right, the, exactly. <laughs> Seeing the code that thing writes. Well, have you seen the? Um, there's a meme going around online. They talk about how that Chat GPT will replace everybody, every software engineer, right? And you'll just have to describe what you want. So by the time you describe what you want, how you want the software to work, you're you just created a software engineer, but in a different language. It's by, just a prompt you, engineer. Yeah, it's the same job. Yeah, it's the same job, just <laughs> different language, different description of how you syntax and all that. And now we're using plain English. Yeah, yeah now we're just using plain English. It's cool. Yeah, so it's four hours to figure out a clever way to cheat on a test. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. Four hours study. Yeah. <laughs> Salim, I have a recommendation for the company name. You could try junk removal near me. Although junk in the trunk's really good. <laughs> <laughs> Already a company. Yeah, it is. Oh, okay, I was gonna say <laughs> that's a funny name. Put your junk in my trunk. <laughs> <laughs> that's very uh, catchy. Right now, like this is one of the most commonly like students freaking themselves out right now. Things. Yeah. It's that, and also students are trying to use it to solve hard problems, and it's not even close to working. Right. So if anyone here is worried, <laughs> calm down. <laughs> the, the, like we had students recently try to basically create a battleship game, and then they're like, oh no, I must just be one line of code that's not working here. Too bad. I'm not going to help you find out what it is. I'm like, that's, that's kind of what the situation is about right now. It's kind of funny. I've been using the heck out of it because I just started a new job and I'm getting into a lot of new domain areas for, for me. And just to, just to kind of point you in the right direction, it's fantastic, right? Yeah. But actual detail, it's like, right? And it's often incorrect or slightly incorrect, but slightly incorrect is not working in, in technology, right? Well, if it gets you 90%, yeah. that's a whole lot of time. That oh yeah, it saved me tons of time. I mean, who's ever spent their entire day on a floor loop? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> super simple but you're like yes, this isn't work. jumping out at me and yeah pipe it into to gpt4 or copilot yes yeah, so you need to edit but um i don't sorry i'm derailing you aren't i go, go for it um uh, i i actually say yes uh use the tool b b is a fantastic tool to use it makes it so you have less of the cheap work to do. Mm -hmm. You have now more time to focus on, hey, it can make a button for me. <laughs> That's awesome. And it's going to catch all the ARIA attributes, clicks, outlines for CS. You can make it do anything you want. But it's like, now I need to have to hook it up to an API. <laughs> and that's probably not going to write it fully for me. I have to do something. <clears throat> like at my job, we're using three different frameworks for the front end. We use Knockout JS, Angular, Ooh. and also Vue. Wow. It's all one application, by the way. <laughs> and sometimes I don't touch Angular code for like two, three months. You know, and then I forget the syntax. Yeah. So I use it for that. Like I know what I got to do, but then the syntax might trip me up. So it's helpful in different ways. And like I said, you're going to be more productive. More people will be more productive. More startups are created. And directly or indirectly, you're going to have opportunities. One advantage I've found that it kind of works well with is if you uh, if you like to do JavaScript with in a functional pattern, um, but your functional pattern, you're not supposed to have any side effects outside of what it's your function, its own scope. And that kind of meshes well with the limited context of the machine learning models have. Uh, since their context is limited, you can't really throw a whole project at it really and have it evaluated, but it can write pure functions. 
because it doesn't need to know the context outside of the scope of just the function you're writing. So like he was saying, it would just like make a function that that uh, automatically just returns uh, an HTML element that's a button with standard CSS and ARIA attributes applied and all that. And that he told to generate that. And it's just like you do this for all the little pieces of uh, I like vanilla JavaScript. Uh, I'm learning React, but mm -hmm. like vanilla JavaScript. So I make all these little functions, and uh, they're all just the old utility functions, essentially. And just getting those little edge cases, like with for loops, that one you miss on one edge. It's like it, it always gets that part, right? So it's like it's nice not to worry about those little edge cases. Nice. You guys hungry? Yeah. I want some pizza. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, Salim. Yeah, thank you. It was a great, great presentation. Um, oh, you have it on, on chat. I'm like, why is it not clicking? Um, with that, I'm always looking for help, uh, be, be it more organizers, uh, volunteers to, to, to help me out. Um, right now, it, it's it's a very small team, and, and I could always use more. What are you with? Lots of stuff. <laughs> like right, right, right now, uh, David's on uh, is my on-site support. Um, David and Jaron do help me do website stuff, and other than that, I I run all communications. Tito for event registration, pizza. <laughs> this is what this is, most is primarily what I I need is is uh, beautiful talks. I have something lined up. Uh, for next month, but uh, I could definitely use uh, some inf in, some help for July and going forward. Uh, next month, I'm giving the talk again because apparently I like to. I'm a sadomasochist. Um, React state management uh, and uh, an unopinionated view of state management. So not just looking at Redux and saying congratulations, you now know state. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually looking at, uh, actually going with NPM trends, find the most popular state libraries, complete said project in all the state libraries and give you some trade-offs about what's good, what's bad. No opinions. I have opinions, trust me, I will share them. But um, <laughs> state management is a problem we all have and there are a hundred ways to solve it. So I'm gonna try and help explain some of that. Anywho, thank you everyone for coming. Pizza is here, finally. And let's hang out for a few hours, chat. Um, we're around. So, cool. thank you. Thank you. There's the round. <laughs> 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 <laughs>